Hello everybody and welcome to Out of the Short Box. Today we are going to have our creator cast about Bob Kane, the creator, or co-creator I should say, of one of the most famous comic book characters and my favorite comic book character, Batman. <laughs> Now this creator cast is going to be a little bit different, and honestly it is because of the subject material. Uh, I had to do a creator cast on Batman's creators, and I had to include Bob Kane because Bob Kane does deserve some credit with it. However, I'm going to be completely upfront and honest with you right now. I am not the biggest fan of Bob Kane. Now while I'm not the biggest fan of Bob Kane, I do have to give credit for Bob Kane for some of Batman's creation, and he is still uh, main listed at DC as the creator, um, but I'll talk about where the discrepancies come down, why some most comic book fans now uh, don't enjoy Bob Kane, um, and why some actually didn't in the past, and we'll talk a little bit about him. But I'm not just going to talk about Bob Kane in this creator cast, I'm going to talk about Batman's creators, and to me... Some people include it to be two people, um, Bob Kane with Bill Finger, which is what you now get in the current credits uh, since about, I think it was 2015, 14 or 15 is when DC changed it. Now they give dual credit to uh, both Bob Kane and Bill Finger. Um, However, I like to give it to three individuals because I think three individuals really had the impact and was a team of creating uh, Batman, and that was Bob Kane, uh, Bill Finger, and Jerry Robinson. So I want to talk about Bob Kane, of course, since he is the primary. He gets the primary credit, and people really need to know who this man was, who Bob Kane was, um, how Batman came to be and so on and so forth. So Bob Kane uh, was born actually Robert Kahn, K-A-H-N. He did change his name to Kane, K-A-N-E, his father did, and it was because of their Jewish migration. His family was Jewish. They migrated from Europe. Um, they did escape um, the upcoming Holocaust uh, that, that was going to um, enslave Europe and just be horrific as we know in history. And it's interesting that we have this route because this is the same type of backstory that you'll hear in Superman as well um, with uh, uh, Jerry Siegel and Joel Schuster. They, they as well escaped uh, the European Holocaust, uh, both Jewish families, and they created an idyllic character. Um, Bob Kane uh, grew up in the Bronx. He grew up in a very rough neighborhood um, in the Bronx, New York. Um, His father was a printer for the Daily News up in New York. And Bob, like I said, he grew up in a rough neighborhood, so he had to fend for himself, and he had to entertain himself um, and find ways to entertain himself that didn't get him in trouble like the rest of the neighborhood kids did. Um, he, growing up in the Bronx during during that time, especially as an immigrant, was, was very rough. Uh, so one thing that Bob enjoyed doing, as he said, was doodling. He enjoyed actually just sketching and, and doodling little things. So he ended up... Um, his father was a printer for the Daily News there in New York City, and one of the things his dad would do is he would bring the funny strips home, the Sunday comics, and Bob would actually trace those until he learned how to draw them freehand. So he would do that uh, very much, and that's where he fell in love uh, with cartooning, and he ended up making it in- into his career. Um, In 1936, he started working officially for comic books, and he worked for WoW Comics. Now, a lot of us don't know that today, what WoW Comics were, because WoW Comics was eventually purchased uh, by DC later on. They still existed when, um, when Bob worked for DC privately. But WoW Comics would eventually... But WoW Comics is famous because the person who owned WoW Comics was Will Eisner. Will Eisner was very influential, if not the father of all comic books. Uh, Will Eisner created The Spirit, um, which was, uh, again, helped influence Batman as well. 
But uh, we uh, today, the comic book world gives awards called the Will Eisner Award for writing, for cartooning, for whatever it may be uh, in the comic book. Um, that's how impactful Will Eisner was to the comic book world. And uh, that's who Bob started working for. He's, he would do small jobs for them. He would pencil pages. He did create some little characters that didn't make a huge popularity. Um, these were more child-based characters, and that's what uh, Bob ended up creating uh, for WoW Comics. Um, and like I said, he would do individual page work, spot work for them as well. So he created Batman in 1939. He was 24 years old. Now, Bob Kane... I don't want to directly associate him as Stan with Stan Lee, but Bob and Stan had this characteristic in common. Um, they were both so much involved in the comic book world um, that they forgot dates, or they embellished dates, they embellished ideas, and so on and so forth. Um, and Bob Kane did this a lot. He would show a lot of inconsistency. So... Bob was born in 1915, and he always credited of creating Batman when he was 18 years old. There is no definitive proof of that. Uh, in fact, the main story goes that he was created when he was 24 years old. In 1939 was when Batman was created, because the, the story behind Batman is this. DC Comics, uh, which it wasn't known as DC then, um, they were national publications, but Action Comics, they would eventually become what we know as DC. Action Comics had a huge hit in this little-known superhero called Superman. Superman had literally taken the world by storm, and they, DC Comics at the time, they knew they had a hit. They wanted to continue on with the superhero trend, so they approached Bob, who really had, he's done some work for them but hadn't done a whole lot yet uh, DC approached Bob to see if he could create a new superhero for this and Bob said he did have the idea when he was a young child um, he said that he loved the old Zorro uh, silent films and he loved uh, so he, he thought of a creator of a character that was based on Zorro a movie called uh, The Bat Whispers and Da Vinci's Flying Machine he said he took all three of those elements to create the Batman. Um, so what ended up happening was was Bob took those three elements and he drew a first illustration of Batman. So um, his first illustration of Batman, how Batman first looked in Bob Kane's eyes, was very similar to Superman. Uh, the original drawing had him in red tights and boots with no gloves or gauntlets like we know of today. Just... Uh, it was basically like a, a, the red tights, the red boots, um, like a grayish or white spandex with a red domino mask. Um, that was his idea. And then he had these two stick-like type bat wings that shot out of his back. That was Bob's original drawing for um, the Batman. Now... You know, he, he pursued on creating this character. He talked the character over with some of the folks there at DC. They loved the idea. They said, let's make it happen. Let's flush this thing out. Well, during his time working at DC, uh, Bob met a brilliant man named Bill Finger. Bill Finger was not an illustrator. He was not a, an artist. Bill was the story guy. He was really helped create what modern comic book authors are today. Uh, up to that point, for a long time, um, they did have this type of setup that Bill had, uh, but a lot of times, a lot of the authors, a lot of the story writers could also draw their characters. That's not how it is in the comic book world. How it usually is now in the comic book world is you have a writer uh, that may have some drawing talent, but they usually never draw or illustrate their own comic books. Their main thing is getting that storyline, creating the myth, creating the universe, creating the world, being that um, that source of creativity for the artist, and the artist takes over and actually flushes out what the character looks like and everything from there. So as Bob was talking about his Batman character, showing his rough drawing that he had, he had ran into Bill Finger, who they had become friends, 
And Bill Finger was instrumental because Bill Finger technically, uh, in my honest opinion, should get the number one uh, credit for creating Batman. Because in all honesty, if you want to talk about the creator, the actual creation, creation of how we know how Batman is, that was because of Bob Finger. Now, uh, Bill Finger. The idea of Batman, though, absolutely needs to go to Bob Kane. So that's why I don't argue the point as much, because Bob Kane was the one that thought of the Batman. You have to give that man credit. No matter how much you dislike him as an individual, no matter how much you dislike his practices, he was the guy that thought of the Batman. Bill Finger just added things to the character, and literally kind of built the character. Bob Kane was the guy that brought out the framework, and Bill Finger was the guy that flushed him out, made him, fleshed him out, made him who we know Batman to be today. So, um, Bill Finger was the guy who said, you know, let's not go with the red tights, let's not go with the domino mask, you know, this is a darker character, he's a creature of the night. Uh, you've even mentioned how he'll take out these gangsters at nighttime, how in the daytime he'll, he, he's a playboy millionaire type, but in the evening he's going to be this vigilante crime fighter, so we need to make him a little darker, so we need to go darker with the outfit. So Bill Finger was the one that gave us how we know Batman today with the cape and the cow the dark, the black, and the gray um, outfit that was what Bill did Bob agreed and they flushed it out in there um, so that's who, who he was and like I said Bill Finger ended up giving us most of the fundamentals um, that we know of um, on Batman now, a lot of people say, well, if that's true, then why did Bob Kane for years get credit? Why did it take till 2014? And again, I, I have a, a earlier podcast about Bill Finger, so please look on the show and you can understand. Um, we It was recently just the anniversary of Bill's death. So please listen to that podcast. Go back to it and listen about the history of Bill Finger and who Bill Finger was. I also need to highly recommend to you a documentary that Hulu did called Batman and Bill. Um, where it goes back and it traces um, how Bill Finger now does get the proper credit that he deserves. Bob Kane, though, was a very cocky and greedy person. That's who he was. He very much was. And I'm not saying that just based on what I've read. Um, in our Facebook page, I am going to link a series of videos. Stan Lee did a show uh, back in the 80s called Comic Book Greats. And... Uh, it was actually in the 80s and 90s. I believe like 88, 89, 90-ish type era. He, he did a set of, of shows called Comic Book Greats. And he had some of the current ones and some of the former ones. And he had a, an interview with Bob Kane. And you can hear Bob Kane's uh, cockiness, his greed, and his anger. Uh, even to Stan Lee, he was very rude, a very coarse character. Uh, so a lot of people wonder how in the world could a guy like this get credit for one of the most iconic characters and literally make millions of dollars out of this character while the others lived in poverty. Bill Finger died impoverished, if you hear my last podcast. Jerry Robinson made some money off Batman, but not as much as he should have. So Bob, uh, what ended up happening was Bob Kane, since Bob Kane was the one approached by DC to create the superhero, Bob Kane was the only one of these individuals that was under contract with DC. At the time, Bill Finger was just doing ghost writing, and Jerry Robinson was just doing ghost illustrating. So a lot of times in the early comic book um, in the golden age of comic books, you didn't have a lot of people contracted out to these magazines and major publications. Most of these individuals that submitted stories, that submitted comic books, that did the writing, that did the drawing, that did the illustration, were freelancers. They would work for newspapers, they would work for uh, local illustrations, they would work for multiple comic book lines, and they would go under as a freelancer as what was considered a, a ghost writer. So Bob Kane would get... Uh, and that's what you see if you look at the original Golden Age comic book Batmans. You only see Bob Kane. You see his iconic signature. Bob had a very unique signature, which he ripped off. And that's the other history of Bob, too, is you find out that 
you start learning that Bob really never had an original idea for himself. He, he, he may have for a few things, but as far as the things that was a hit, they were never really his. Even his signature, he ripped off another individual before. But it's an iconic signature that most people know. He, he signed his name with a lowercase b, a gigantic O, and another lowercase b. And then he writes Kane and he puts it in the box. That was all you saw in the Golden Age comic books. You never saw any credit given to uh, Bill Finger or Jerry Robinson. And then in later years, you eventually saw credit given to Jerry Robinson. It was very rare that Bill Finger's name ever showed up with anything Batman, and that was the cruelty of it all, because he was the one that created, again, some of the most iconic stuff, the Batmobile. He was then the one that fleshed out the character of the Joker. Now, as far as how the Joker looks like, that's another thing that Bob Kane argued argued about. He argued that him and Bill created it. Now, Bob did give Bill uh, credit for that um, based on Bill bringing him and saying, hey, that looks like Conrad Veidt in the movie called The Man Who Laughs. And you, if you see The Man Who Laughs, it is. It's a matching uh, persona on, on how the Joker looks. And then you have Jerry Robinson who is arguing that he based the Joker off of a playing card that he saw, and this playing card is actually in uh, some of the museums and, and everything from there. So you have this huge uh, fight. Well, Bob never gave up that fight. Bob always... Bob went to his grave stating that he was the main one that created Batman. He did give credit to Bill Finger for helping him, but he never gave Bill Finger like that co-creator type... Um, that co-creator type echoing, you know, that, that, that credit. He never gave him that credit, and, and, and it took a, a horrific battle with DC, a horrific thing uh, from there to, 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 to turn the tides, to get Bill Finger the proper one. Now, Jerry Robinson, I haven't talked much about Jerry. Uh, Jerry was the illustrator uh, for many of the early comic books, for the early Batman comic books. He did illustrate uh, the Joker. He did illustrate uh, the Penguin. He illustrated a lot of the original ones that we see in the Golden Age comic books. Uh, I want to talk about Robin a little bit here. So Bill Finger um, had decided that since part of Batman's personality was based on Sherlock Holmes, and that was the part that Bill provided. Originally, Bob Kane's idea of Batman was this dark, vigilante, fisticuffs type guy. Um, Bill Finger was actually the guy that created, number one, Bruce Wayne. Uh, Bob Kane originally left his his other persona kind of out there. Um, he is just a regular individual. He never really assigned a personality to Batman's alter ego. Bill Finger was the one that decided that this gentleman's name was going to be Bruce Wayne, that he became Batman because he saw his parents killed. You see what I'm saying? A lot of the vital parts of the Batman storyline was Bill Finger. You know, Bill said, hey, you know, this is a guy who's rich. His name's Bruce Wayne. He's a millionaire besides being Batman. That's how he can provide for all of his equipment, how he can provide for everything that he has. He has no superpowers. He, however, he, he's trained himself to be a detective because one of Bill Finger's heroes and also Bob Kane's. Bob Kane's heroes was this too, because he referred it to a lot in Bob Kane's, was Sherlock Holmes. They considered the character of Sherlock Holmes to be one of the greatest characters ever created. So Bob and Bill both had an ad an admonition for this. And see, but Bill Finger and Bob had known each other since high school, so they had talked about this with each other as well. They both had a, a shared love for the creation of, of Sherlock Holmes. Well, one of the things that Bill wanted that he approached um, Bob about was he said, we've created this character, we've given him the detective skills like Sherlock Holmes has, but when Bill was looking at the early comics, he said it's missing something. Sherlock Holmes is missing his Dr. Watson. And right at that time, DC had already approached Bob about providing another character that the younger people could appeal to, that the younger children could appeal to. Adults were having a great time with Batman. They could appeal to Batman. They could understand Batman. Even the teenagers had a good affinity towards Batman. But the younger children who were reading these comic books, 
the sales the sales totals for them were low because they didn't have a character they could relate with. In comes Robin. Now, the name Robin was not Bill Finger's idea, nor Bob's. Originally, the name for Robin was Mercury. That was the name that Bob Kane wanted to give the new sidekick. It wasn't until Jerry Robinson spoke out. And he said, no, how about if we go with Robin? And Because Jerry Robinson was a huge fan of the Robin Hood stories. And also, Jerry Robinson thought that it would be a good match. Because since the Robin Hood in the stories was a vigilante character, for Batman to have a sidekick who also had a name that tied in with the vigilante character, it would provide to that, uh, that vigilante type uh, hero that we have in Batman. So Bob Kane, though, like I said, i got to give the man some credit. Uh, a lot of people will bash him, and I know I said I don't like him, and I'll show you a video of why on our Facebook page. Uh, but Bob Kane did create uh, some, some of the iconic characters that we know today. There was no argument from anyone that Bob didn't create these characters. He created Two-Face. He created Catwoman. Catwoman was actually based on his cousin. He created Scarecrow. And he created Clayface. So Bob actually did create some of the most iconic characters we know in the Batman series today. So Bob Kane does deserve some credit. The beef that a lot of fans have and the beef that I have is that Bob took 100% of the credit to himself. He did say that Bill helped him, that Bill was there in the beginning. But come 1989, especially when the new Batman movie came out, you could see a drastic change in Bob Kane. Bob Kane had enjoyed the spotlight from the 1960s on. He had a huge hit with Batman in the comic books in the Golden Age, and he made a small fortune then. But it wasn't until other media publications started really benefiting off of Batman that Bob Kane shot himself to celebrity status. He moved from New York City to Los Angeles. Um, and then in the 1960s, of course, we had the, the 1966 version of Batman come to the big screen. That uh, Fox and Warner Brothers released um, the, uh, the Batman show uh, starring Adam West and, and Burt Ward. And along with the television show, the exposure to the television show, um, it wasn't an increase in comic sales because Bob had long been out of the comic book realm then, but it was over, um, you had toys being licensed now. You had uh, Batman toys were becoming a lot more popular, a lot more collector's items and sold big. And of course, um, Bob Kane being credited under DC's contract as the creator of the Batman, he benefited by getting those royalties. So he shot very high, wealthy, became a wealthy individual, an L.A. socialite. And then as the movies were begin, uh, beginning to be adapted, um, he took roles as creative consultant. And Bob even took credit for some of the stuff in the movies that he didn't do. Um, you know, Stan Lee admitted, you know, on the movie base that they gave him the title creative consultant, but he never really did anything. The only thing he did was took a check. You know, Stan Lee was honest about that, that, hey, that when they put my name down as executive producer or if they put me down as creative consultant, I may say a couple of things, but really I don't have a lot of pull. Bob Kane was a separate. He would take credit for the new Batmobile in the 89 movie, and he did not create that. He would take credit for the Batwing, and he didn't create that. Um, I mean, you can tell if you look at the Golden Age versus the 1989 movie that, no, Bob, you didn't create those things. And there was a bat plane, uh, but there was nothing like the Batwing that we saw in the 1989 movie, and there was a drastic overhaul to how the Batmobile looked in the 1989 movie. But Bob loved the stardom. I mean, the movie was a box office hit. Um, it created, I mean, it was just iconic uh, and really helped jumpstart the whole superhero movie genre. Uh, I mean, a lot of people talk about Marvel, and Marvel may have resurrected a little bit of it, but man, the superhero movie stuff really got a huge jumpstart and huge fandom back in 1989 with the original Batman movie starring Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson. Um, but you just had uh, Bob t was very cocky, and again, I'll post a video of when Stan Lee was interviewed, uh, interviewed Bob, and you'll see his attitude. You'll see why most comic book fans did not enjoy the man. Um, but, like I said, I wanted to give 
some credit where credit's due. The man did give us Batman. He thought of the idea. Um, it was Bill Finger and Jerry Robinson who helped flesh out Batman. So we need to create them. So really, you know, Batman, who is a member of DC's Trinity, was created by a trinity of people. And Batman continues to evolve today. And that's the beauty of comic book characters, is that while we have a mainline creator who created them, we have people that still add to the mythos today. We have Scott Snyder, who has beautifully given us additional mythos into the Batman character. I mean, he's given us the Court of Owls. He gave us the Death of the Family storyline. You have people like Frank Miller, who did the Dark Knight Returns, and who adds a little bit more to the mythology. You have Alan Moore, who beautifully wrote The Killing Joke, and who who really gave us, while, while Joker doesn't have a definitive origin story, he gave us one of the best origin stories. And if there's any that I think ever will be be considered canon, I think Alan Moore's would be. Uh, but again, that's not been solidified, so we'll talk about the Joker at another time. But um, Alan Moore beautifully created that. Uh, I, I mean, you have all these creators, and that's why I want to do these creator casts to help further educate you all. Tom King right now. Tom King is adding so much to the Batman mythos as well. We're starting to learn a little bit more. We've got some additional characters that are coming in. And again, Scott Snyder gave us you know, the Batman Who Laughs storyline. We have different stories over the years. What Neil Adams did with the character, uh, I mean, you have all this stuff and you see Batman evolve into who Batman is today. And uh, we have this, so, so it's just a story that's gotten better and better and better. And in any classic mythology, any classic story, that's what happens through time. You may have a rough story that just gets better and better and better and better as more writers, as more thought goes into it. Um, it's just became a beautiful, beautiful thing. So uh, that's pretty much the uh, story for uh, Bob Kane. Uh, let me know what you think. Feel free to message us on Facebook, or you can email us at outoftheshortbox at gmail.com. Uh, please go and support us on patreon.com. We're going to start doing some YouTube videos and having some... Uh, interviews here, uh, but I am going to start doing some YouTube videos, so please follow us um, on Facebook. Uh, you can Twitter, go to our Twitter, at Nokomis Josiah, um, or you can, um, again, definitely go to Patreon. Look us up on Patreon. If, you, if you're just a member for a dollar, if you donate a dollar to Out of the Short Box, um, you'll get a private uh, podcast every month. It'll be something unique that I talk about, and eventually when we go to YouTube, you'll get a private video of something that we have to talk about. And it could be on any of the characters, it could be anything from there. But until then, stay tuned. Um, our, our next one, uh, podcast will be on the history, uh, the hero history of Batman, which is definitely going to be a little bit longer show. Uh, so just expect that one. And then I'm also going to be doing uh, Off the Rack here this week, and I'm going to talk. Be, I'll probably be talking about Exo Man of War. I haven't made up my mind yet, but um, I'm going to be talking about a unique comic book that maybe not all of you all get um, and, and provide it from there. So until then, uh, stay tuned, and I'll catch you in the next podcast. Thanks for listening.